Good morning, mortgage coaches. Thanks for joining me for another installment of our 16 success strategies. Today's training is going to be covering five elements you might not be using in Edge. So I want to show you and make sure you're aware of them so you can start using them to uh, beef up your reports a little bit and uh, you know tell the story a little bit better for your borrower's financial uh, picture. So the things I'm going to cover today are I'm going to show you how to copy or add analyses. So for when you're doing multiple properties for somebody, you may not know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. You can actually just copy those and you can actually copy them within a client record. So I'll show you that. I'm going to show you how to use Edge Live. If you're not familiar with what Edge Live does, this is a fully interactive way to kind of guide your client through your proposal. Once you've got them on the phone and they're looking at your report, you can actually pop out the more infos, you can highlight elements. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. I'm going to show you how to create full product templates. Now, our product templates have recently been revised to include the escrow reserves. So, you know, your hazard insurance reserves, tax reserves and such. I'm going to show you how to create a full product template that you can use. So it's literally a one or two click item to put in a loan product. I'm also going to show you how to customize your reinvestment strategies. Uh, you may not be aware, but you can uh, actually customize your principal reduction strategies and your asset accumulation strategies so you can reinvest different amounts of money at different periods in the mortgage. And then the final thing I'm going to show you is the Edge widget. You might not be aware, but there is a widget that you can actually send out to your clients and partners, as well as post on your website that's basically a data capture tool. So it's going to allow you to capture a few more leads uh, just based on having a, a, an extra presence out there online. So first things first, I think we'll go ahead and start with copying and adding analyses. So where this comes into play the most, I'm finding, is actually on the partner side. So say, for instance, I've got this presentation that I've, I've done for Jacob Realtor, and this is uh, 2309 Apricot Drive. But if I'm working with this realtor partner pretty consistently, I'm going to have more presentations for this person, and I want to make sure they all get captured in the same area. So if we take a look at our home screen right now, and I'm going to go into the View All section, and I'm actually going to search for that partner. So you can see there's Jacob Realtor. When I hit the drop down arrow, you can see that I've got two different properties in there. So how did I do that? How did I make it so they both appear under that realtor partner? What I did is I actually added an analysis to that realtor. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. One is you can do it from here in the home screen. So you find your realtor partner and you want to add a new analysis for them. Left click on that partner name and hit add analysis. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do it? And when you hit yes, what it does is it, it creates a new analysis under that realtor partner. So you can see it brought in the realtor contact information. But it leaves the property info blank. It leaves the products blank. All this good stuff is blank. So you can prepare a full new presentation. But the great part is you don't have to redo all the contact information. It already brought it in there for you. If you had uploaded a photo and logo, it's already in there for you. So all you really need to do is put property information and loan products. And you're going to have a new presentation that's under this existing partner. Now, another way you can do this is if you go into a specific presentation that you've done, so let's say I go and find that, that apricot one again. What if I want to copy this entire presentation? What I can do is in the home screen here, what I did is I hit the drop down next to that partner name and I found the presentation I want to copy. So not only do I want a report that just has his contact information on it, but I want to mirror that same report I did for another property. So I'm going to left click on the one I want to copy and I'm going to hit copy analysis. This is now going to ask me if I want to do it under the current partner or as a new partner. Now you may find that uh, you have specific, uh, like uh, four, four loan scenarios. You have an FHA, a conventional, and maybe a single premium, and uh, say a 5-1 arm that you like to show pretty consistently on these open house flyers. If that's the case and you want to do this for a new partner, select new partner here, and what will happen is when you copy it, it's going to copy all your loan products, but it's going to have a blank partner. So you can name it whatever you want. It's completely independent of the original one you copied. So it can have its own video, and it's going to have its own link. Now, oftentimes, you want to copy it for the same partner, and that's OK, too. You can click Current Partner, and when I copy this analysis, I'm going to have a mirror image of this Apricot Drive one, and it's going to be under the current partner. So all I have to do is go in and revise maybe the subject address, and uh, I can record a video on it and send that link out to, uh, to my partner and to my clients. Now, the same thing applies when you're in the client's menu. So it's a little bit different reasoning for why you would do it for a client. But say, for instance, you have done an FHA or you've done a, a total cost analysis for John Borrower. 
And this was just an FHA versus conventional, but it was primary residence. So what if you want to do another presentation for his investment property? So same concept, you're going to go into the home screen and hit view all next to your client list. You're going to find that particular client, and this was uh, John Borrower. And I got a few of those in here. But you're going to go into John Borrower and you're going to left click on his name. Then you can hit add analysis. And same thing as before, this is going to add another analysis underneath that particular partner. Now this one actually kind of went a little funky on me. So let's uh, go back into the view. I'm going to select the other one because that was the wrong John Borrower. Let's go with Joe Borrower. So if I want to add, and this is actually a perfect one because I did a refi for his second home, but what if I want to do a refi for the primary? So I'm going to left click on Joe Borrower. I'm going to add an analysis and I'm going to hit yes. And what I've done now is I've got all the contact information from my borrower and I've got a blank analysis here so I can enter new products. I can enter new property information. And this one, all I would make sure to do is tag the friendly name for what it is. So in this case, it would be a uh, refi for primary. And then once you have saved that, and the save functions are always these right and left arrows inside edge. When you go back into your home screen and hit view all, and you go into that same client, and that was Joe Borrower, you can see now I've got two presentations in there. I've got the refi for second home that I did back in 2013. Then I've got a refi for the primary that I've got here in 2014. So this should help you to just kind of refine your client list a little bit. Make sure they're grouped together. Same thing with your partners. You want to be able to find these a lot easier than creating new records for every single one of them. So that's, that's the first tip. This is just basically copying or appending analyses to an existing client record. Now, the next thing I want to show you, and I'll take a breather here for a second, just in case you guys are taking notes, is going to be Edge Live. Now, Edge Live is, uh, it's certainly not something you have to do with every client, but it's going to make life really easy for you. What Edge Live does is it allows you to control the live output of the presentation while your borrower is looking at it. So, for instance, let's go back to this refi for my second home. I'm going to go to the very last screen of the Edge Wizard, and I'm going to hit Generate Link. Now, once the link is returned, I'm going to send that over to my borrower. Now, the idea behind Edge Live is that you're going to send this link to your borrower, but you're going to get them on the phone right away. And the reason is you want to be able to talk them through this presentation. So what I'm going to do for you today is I'm actually going to, uh, let's see, catch a new tab out of here real quick. And I'm going to show you two different windows. The one on the right is going to be my borrower's screen. The one on the left is my screen. So I want you to imagine that you are working on the left side here. You're the originator, you're inside edge, and you have taken this link and you've sent it to your borrower. Now your borrower has, has clicked on that link and this is the right side. So he's clicked on your link and he's now seeing your presentation on his screen. So right side is borrower screen, left side is your screen. Now you're on the phone with him so you can talk him through what this is saying, but why not show him specifically what you're talking about? In order to do that, on your side, click on Edge Live. This opens up a preview of the presentation, but you're going to notice there's a couple of different things on here. There is a clear all button, which is not on the client side of the presentation because he can't clear out all the highlighting. Only you can. And the other thing is when you hover your mouse over these fields, you'll see a blue box around them. That indicates that you can highlight a field. So if I'm talking to my borrower, he's got my link open, and I'm saying, you know, Mr. Borrower, I wanted to show you this refinance transaction. As you can see, I've got your current mortgage here, and it's showing a payment of $18.46. Now, did you see what happened right there? I left-clicked on that cell, and it automatically highlighted on my borrower's report for them. He doesn't even have to, to look for what I'm doing. He can see it. It popped out for him right away. And as I'm continuing through the conversation, I'm going to highlight whatever I need to discuss with him. I'm going to show him that 30-year fixed loan. And it's going to highlight on his side. If I want to drop off highlighting, simply click on that again, and it'll remove the highlighting for that particular area. You can go even further. You can even pop out the more info sections. So for instance, on this one, I would pop out the more info sections. And you can see on my borrower side, it does the same thing. We're now looking at the payment breakdown. So if I wanted to isolate, here's your new payment breakdown on the new mortgages. And I'm going to, I'm going to highlight the fields that I want to show them. And it's going to highlight on his end as well. Now, specifically with this 30-year fixed, I'm showing a couple of reinvestments, so I'd probably want to highlight those as well so he can see what they're doing. Then you can also bounce graphs. So, for instance, 
If you wanted to bounce this graph for your client, simply left click on it, it'll highlight it and bounce it so he can see exactly what you're talking about. Now the same thing carries through to the closing costs. So if you wanted to show him the fee detail, you can click on fee detail. It'll come up on his side and whatever you choose to left click on, say lender's title, for instance, it puts a blue line on my side, but it also does it on my borrower's side. So if you're discussing individual fees, you're talking about the tax reserves he's going to have to bring in. You can highlight that on your side and it'll automatically highlight on your borrower's side. Now, similarly, once you close out those windows, it also closes it out on your borrower side. So I could now go over to my reinvestment grid. I can show them that principal reduction payment. I can then show them that I'm also earmarking an additional amount of money to go into uh, to a new investment vehicle with a higher rate of return than his current savings account. So I might want to highlight those. Then when I'm done having that conversation, I'm going to close that out. And I can continue doing that on each one of these more info sections. Now, one thing to point out for you is when you want to clear out all the highlighting, simply hit clear all. This will remove the highlighting from both your side and your borrower side. So give it a shot. Try practicing with one of one of your uh, coworkers or maybe, you know, send it to your spouse and just kind of practice with them going over what the total cost analysis is and show them the highlighting. Make sure to pop it out for them. It's, uh, it's, it's very easy for you to just send out a link and hope your borrower understands it. But the fact is 90% of them really don't know a whole lot about mortgages. So you're going to have to guide them through this presentation a little bit. The best way to do it Get them on the phone, make sure they're watching your link, click on Edge Live, start highlighting and drive them through the presentation. All right, so uh, let's get out of Edge Live here. And we will go to our next quick tip. The next thing is full product templates. So inside Edge, you have the ability to create templates out of existing products that are already there. So you'll notice if you go to the last screen of any product inside Edge, there's a button that says save as template. Now what that saves is it saves all three screens of the product. So it'll save your monthly escrows, it'll save your closing cost screens, and it'll save your loan parameters. Now the reason this is so important is why would you want to do all that work every single time? The best way to do it is go into one that you've already prepared. Go to the end of that product, Make sure you've got everything filled out. So for instance, if I wanted to collect hazard insurance reserves, I'm gonna put my two months in there and then uh, two months of tax reserves. And if I wanna collect an annual premium for the hazard, I'll put it in there. And then I'm gonna save this as a template. And I will call this one 30 fixed success. So that's for today's call and hit okay. Now the great part about doing this is anytime I go into a new client or even updating an existing client, all I have to do when I get to my product screen is use this little drop down right here at the top left, add product from template. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to name it first. So this one's going to be 30 fixed and I'll put in my purchase price. Let's say 350. And then as soon as I apply that template, it's going to do the rest. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the list because I know that's where it is. There's my 30 fixed success template. And you can see that I had a zero down payment on that one. This was 100% financing, but it brought in my characteristics. It brought in my interest rate, my term. When I go through, it already brought in all my closing costs. All the reserves are already there in the prepaid escrows line. And you can see when I get to the final screen, my hazard insurance, property taxes, everything down to the reserves is all there. I didn't have to change a single thing about this particular product. Now, the one thing you probably would need to change on a case by case basis would probably be your origination fee if it's not in the form of a percentage. So things like me, I have a loan origination of 2000 here. It's probably going to be closer to 3000 for this loan. But that's the only real thing I need to, to alter on this title fees. Usually I like ballparking those or figure out a percentage that works for your for your title fees. You know, usually it's going to be around, you know, 0.04 plus some amount of money, something like that. But you can create custom fees inside your fee templates that will take care of that part. So really the only thing you'll have to adjust on a case by case basis might be your origination. But again, you can create a custom fee called origination and tag it as a percentage so that it automatically calculates that for you as well. All right, so that is a full product template. And you notice I didn't have to save a fee template to do this. All I did was I took one of my existing products that I have inside Edge, and I literally just saved it as a template so that that's available anytime I do a new product, either on the client side or the partner side. Now, this also brings up another question that I get quite often coming through the support box. 
I've created a presentation for a partner. It's in my open house flyer right now, but I want to turn this into a TCA. How do I get that information over to my total cost analysis? Well, the bad news is you can't copy directly from a partner to a client. The fields are just too different, so it won't accept a copy that way. The good news is you can still copy the info. And the way to do it is save each one of the products on your open house flyer as product templates. Then go in, create your total cost analysis, and pull in each one of those product templates. You've reduced your, your, uh, your key work to almost nothing by doing it that way. All right, so let's move along to our next topic. Now, the next topic is going to be customizing your reinvestments. Many of you may not be aware that when you go into the reinvestment grid here, and I'll start at the very top level, some of you might not be aware that you can show reinvestments. So you have the ability to show principal reduction payments, you have the ability to show payments back to their current savings account, and you have the ability to show payments going to a new investment vehicle. You can do all three together, you can do one at a time, completely up to you. But you also now have the ability, and this was a few months back that we released this, but you can actually double click on any one of these cells in blue and you can customize the payment schedule. So say for instance, and I'm gonna double click on it, say for instance, I am saving them $100 a month with this new refinance transaction, but I know that after 59 months, their MI is gonna drop off. And the reason I would know that is it says right here down at the bottom. So if this mortgage had MI on it, it would tell me exactly when that MI is gonna cut off and what the last MI payment was. Now I know that I can reinvest at that point. So let's cancel out of there. I'm gonna actually go put MI on this product so you guys can see what it looks like. So we'll just put it at 78%. And now when we go into our reinvestment strategy, you can see that it now shows you the MI cutoff month as month 134. But when you double click on this, this is the cool part. And actually my MI payment is showing exorbitant here because I didn't have a real scenario, but it does show you the MI cutoff month as well as the last MI payment. So when you wanna, when you wanna do this, and actually I'm gonna obliterate that so it doesn't look so funny. Ah, I didn't, <laughs> there's your problem, Jacob. All right, now I've got a correct MI payment. Okay, so we'll get back into this. So when we double click on this guy, you can see that my MI cutoff month is month 134. My last MI payment is 264.32. Now if I'm saving them $100 a month, just to begin with, I'm gonna start at month one with a reinvestment of $100. But remember, once I, once I get past my MI cutoff month, say at month 135, I'm going to add another line item, call it month 135, and this one's actually going to be for 364.32. I now have additional monies I can reinvest at that point. So what I've told Edge here doing this reinvestment is starting at month one, I want a $100 payment a month going towards principal reduction. That's going to keep going until month 135, at which point it's going to turn into 364.32. And that'll keep going indefinitely until the loan is paid off. Now there's another factor that comes into play here. What if I wanna show a lump sum payment to either principal reduction or a reinvestment? Now in this case, I'm gonna do it in principal reduction so you guys can see what it looks like. But let's say that at uh, month 60, they were expecting some kind of, uh, you know, a large sum of money coming their way, whether it's an annuity that's finally gonna mature or something like that. You can add a line item for that month. So say for instance, month 60, they're getting $10,000 and I want them to put it into the mortgage. And you can see it automatically regroups it for you. But in order to do a lump sum payment, you only want it to hit one time. Right now, this says I have a $100 payment from months one through 59. Then at month 60, I paid 10,000 and it keeps doing 10,000 a month until 135. So that's obviously not correct. I need to add one additional line item, make it month 61. Come on, there we go. And then I need to bring it back to the $100 level. So now you can see what I've got, got going on here. I have a $100 payment starting at month one through 59. At month 60, I have a $10,000 payment going into that account. At month 61, it goes back to my 100, continues on at 100 per month until I get to 135, at which point it reinvests the MI. Now you can do this same strategy in both the, uh, the, the term reduction area at the top here or you can do it down in the investments or the savings. So if you were to double click on these guys, you have the same option. Now you'll notice because I did that customization, it actually reduced my MI cutoff point. 
because I'm making those additional payments. So I would actually probably want to go in and change this guy instead of 135 to be 101. And now I've got a full reinvestment. So starting at month one, I'm doing $100 a month. Once it gets to that uh, lump sum payment at month 60, it's going to put $10,000 back into the mortgage. And after that, it resumes the $100 payment until my MI cuts off, and then I get that 364 payment. Again, that can be done in principal reduction, savings, or the investment vehicles. So keep this in mind. This is a great strategy to be able to show somebody, especially with MI drop-off, if you're looking at a current mortgage that has MI versus a new mortgage that may have MI for a short time, or maybe it doesn't have MI, you can actually customize that, that principal reduction or that investment to go in at exactly the points you want it to go. All right, so there's customizable reinvestments. Now, the last thing I want to show you, we have about seven minutes left today, is I want to show you how to create your own Edge widget. In order to do this, go into your settings inside Edge. So now when you get into your settings area inside Edge, you're going to see a button at the bottom called Create Edge Widget. Now what this does is this, this enables you to create that little web form that you can put either on a web page, you can send it to somebody via text, via email, and when they complete the information, it automatically lets you know via text or email, depending on what you choose, and then it also populates that person's information into your edge so they come across as a client record for you so you can just start building a total cost analysis for them as soon as you get some information about their loan so one thing I want to draw your attention to is that the edge widget button will not pop up if you're missing either a cell phone number or a business address those are required so make sure you've got those in there if you do see that this edge widget button is grayed out it's because you're missing one of those fields uh, so you'd want to update those make sure they're filled out now once you do have that ready to go, hit Create Edge Widget. This is going to bring up a form for you. So we now have the option here to choose whether we want to receive an email alert when an entry is received. If you want to receive a text message, you can check this box here. And you can even have a text message sent to an alternate number if you'd like to. Now additionally, you've got options on whether you want to show your photo, your logo, and your address on the widget itself. And these will make more sense to you once you see the actual widget, but you've got text areas that you can edit, things like your header text. So I've called this one Get Your Personal Home Loan Options Report. Now you also have additional text that you can put on the form. So this could be more data about you. This could be uh, just a, a brief message to your prospective clients. Uh, and then you've got a confirmation message. So once they fill out the form and submit it to you, this is what will come up in their browser. So once you've chosen your settings and they look the way you want them to, hit Update Form Options. Now you'll see up at the top right here, you'll see a little updated thing will come up, and that lets you know you're ready to roll. So at this point, this link down at the very bottom, this is the one you're going to send out to your clients and partners and have them distribute it. Text it to them, email it to them, however you want to do it. Now I'm going to paste this into a new browser window so you can see what the widget looks like. Now as you can see, this one is shaped like a phone. There's, that's definitely done on purpose. This is meant to be consumed on the mobile device. So if you were to text somebody your particular link, and this is unique to you, and that's your phone number right there, when they click on it on their mobile device, they're going to get this form to fill out. And as they do their, their form submissions, you can see that I've got my logo, I've got my, uh, my home options report uh, text up at the top, I've got my name, NMLS, and my street address. But when they submit it, so for instance, if I submit it as Jacob Gibbs, and I'll use the support address, and then phone number. Now as soon as I hit submit here, it's going to return that little piece of text that I had, su I had submitted in the Edge form. So you can see it says, thanks, we'll contact you shortly. That's the editable part that is represented right here. Now, very cool part about this is I would have received a text message alert letting me know that this person has completed the form. And if I jump back over to Edge, go to my home screen, and actually I probably need to log in and out just to see this, but if I go to view all, I know I can see it. So if I look myself up, there's Jacob Gibbs. And let's see what the most current one, there's the one from today. So you can see 625. And if I open this up, all it has is my name and phone number. It doesn't have any more information because that's all the widget collected for me, but I've got this person in my database now. I can now call them up, I can take all the other information that goes alongside with the Edge Wizard, and I can prepare that total cost analysis for them. Now another kind of cool factor, and you might want to try this yourself, is send yourself your own link via email or via text, whatever you want to do. 
but then click on the link from your mobile device from your phone and when you get that that form open on your phone save it as a bookmark what it does is it actually saves it to the front screen of the phone with your image on it so try it out see what you think about it uh, you can also advise your uh, your real estate partners to do the same if they uh, save a link to your form on their phone it's gonna have your little picture on it on their phone and when they're when they're going around and talking to their clients and they want to to have their clients contact you for more information about the financing aspects all they're gonna do is bring open their phone they're gonna tap on your on the icon of your face it brings up the form they hand that phone to their client and say here just fill out these four fields and my best guy is going to get in touch with you for financing options. So that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot to the form. It's very, very simple. Um, I would say there's one other thing that I didn't cover here, and that is this part right here, this iframe, this can actually be embedded into your web page. So if you design your own web pages, uh, or if you know you got a webmaster helping you with it, all you have to do is paste this little bit of code into the HTML portion of your web page, and it'll actually put that same widget, like we saw earlier, this one right here, will appear on your website. So uh, you have options on where you want to place it and everything, but uh, that's something your webmaster can help you with. But try it out. Get your widget out there. I see a lot of people just putting this link in their uh, in their in their signature line on their email. So that's that's a great way to do it too. Uh, but give it a shot and let us know what you think about it. And if you run into any trouble, contact us at support. So with that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap today's call. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to jump into our knowledge base. It really is the best place for finding all kinds of detail. For instance, if you missed a little bit about what we were talking about today with the widget, you can always hit help inside edge and then type in widget and it shows you how to use the edge widget for lead capture so this is basically what we just went through but maybe a little bit more detailed for you uh, but of course if you have any questions you can always submit a request here or just email us at support at mortgagecoach.com and we're always happy to help thank you very much everybody I'm gonna end the call for today have a wonderful day bye bye